Hello, this is Tanya with TK Sewing Machine and Repair, and today I have a uh, Singer 401A. Uh, tremendous machines. Um, if you don't know the reputations, they're very well sought after machines because they just have a lot of flexibility. They're really strong. Um, that's driven by a uh, worm gear. The gear is actually on the hand wheel so that's what drives the machine and it makes it stronger and um, there are a tremendous amount of stitches that you can do with this machine and the stitch guide is up here so you don't have to get out the manual if you do buy this machine I can provide you with a PDF copy of a manual but um, so all the different stitch combinations are all here where you need to have uh, your needle position and or stitch width. Um, this is That's what this lever is right here. So if you're just doing a straight stitch, this is uh, left and then center and right. But if you're doing a zigzag stitch, then, um, then this would be your width stitch, your width lever, I'm sorry. So this is uh, the stitch length knob, and all the way up is reverse, all the way down is your longest stitch, and in order to lock it in to maybe like 10 stitches per inch, you just twist this knob and it locks down so you can't move it, and the machine doesn't move it, and so you get a consistent stitch. Uh, it has a built-in light. Um, what else about this machine? Uh, it's just a tremendous machine. I've had quite a few of the 401s uh, come through the shop over the past few months and this one was probably the easiest one to uh, get going. So um, let's just start by winding a bobbin. So this is the bobbin winding uh, mechanism right here and in order to wind a bobbin you have to loosen the clutch right here this is what I call the clutch and you raise the bobbin tire up against the hand wheel so here we go so I guess I should have mentioned you have three um, spool pins and this one is the spool pin that you use to wind the bobbin. So we're going to undo the thread. This is the bobbin winders at rest position. So while you're sewing, you would put it down here. And now we're going to tighten the clutch because now we want the needle to move. And we're going to drop the bobbin in. The bobbin is a class 66 bobbin and you'll get one with this machine. These are e found easily on uh, eBay, Amazon, any of your sewing centers, Walmart, you can find them. So you just drop it, the bobbin in. There's a little notch here. You pull the thread through the notch and then up through the little hole right here and then you're going to thread the top of the machine. Now, I have said this before, uh, when I'm testing machines, I uh, typically use two different colors of thread because um, I want to make sure that I understand um, if there's any problems with the stitches, if it's top or bottom. And it's so easy to do when um, you have different color threads. So it threads like you would expect a regular uh, 15 class machine to thread. And 15 class machine would refer to um, the bobbin, uh, the, the type of bobbin that goes in the machine. And so you thread it from front to back so this is the first time I've tested this machine. I just finished it. So let's see how it goes. 
and it picks up thread and so that's always a good sign because um, it's the first test in sewing right so I have a piece of white flannel I'm gonna put the presser foot on the floor so I can use both hands and take off my shoe I, I like to sew with my right foot barefoot and so I've, I've always been that way. So um, let's start sewing. Needle down. Oh, we have it zigzag. Okay, let's do a zigzag. The top looks really good. The bottom is, the stitches are pulled a little bit, so I'm going to tighten up the tension. Still pulled a little bit. Okay, not really loving that yet. Let's go the other way with the tension. Hmm, that's even worse. So when the tension isn't working correctly, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to re-thread the machine because I just want to make sure that I got it threaded correctly and that's what you should do too. So I have a brand new needle in this machine. And so that tension is really loose. I'm gonna put the, it still feels really kind of loose. That feels a little better. I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. So the like I said, when you're uh, having some tension issues, I will re-thread the machine first before I do anything else. Because that's the easiest thing to do, really. So re-thread it. That's better. That's a lot better. And now it's coming through the top a little bit. better. The top looks okay. Now the top is pulling a little bit, so it's just finding that happy medium. So I don't want to do anything else with the top tension. I am going to adjust the uh, bobbin tension because I would really like for this machine to come in between three and six. And if I have to um, go all the way from six to nine to get a good stitch, it doesn't leave uh, the end user a whole lot of room to um, to do adjustments depending on the type of fabric uh, that uh, they are sewing. So it's all about uh, being able to 
So when I adjust the bobbin tension, I'm only going like a quarter of a turn. Very, very small increments, and I'm going to have to take the bobbin case out to do this. So this is where you uh, lift up the feed dog plate right here, and I'm doing that so I can get the uh, bobbin case out a little bit easier, easier, so I can get to this uh, little screw right here. So just a quarter turn on that, and put the bobbin case back in. So these bobbin cases, once you get used to uh, dealing with them, they're really easy to use, probably easier than the class 15 bobbin cases. Um, you just have to make sure that the bobbin case is sitting inside the race, or the, the race is sitting inside the bobbin, and then there's a little... Um, assembly right here that pops into place and that keeps the uh, bobbin case in place. So we're going to try it again with a little bit tighter tension. We're going to lower the feed dog plate. We're going to bring up the thread and let's try it again. That is just about perfect. I'm going to loosen the tension a little bit on top. And tighten it a little bit. The other thing is I always like to wind the bobbin that I'm going to be using on the machine uh, on that machine because, you know, it'll wind its own bobbin better than another machine will. Okay, what line am I at? I'm right here. Okay, I think that's acceptable. And let's do a straight stitch. So bring your needle up, and I believe B and L straight. Okay, let's see here. Straight stitching is A and K. Okay. A and K. You just want to make sure your knobs pop back into place, and that way you know that you're engaging the uh, right gear in there. Oh, that stitch looks amazing. That's an amazing stitch right there. So let's do something fun and get to the center of the naked place in there and let's do a fun stitch um, let's do just like let's do H and L so H and L we'll go to L H. And uh, this is kind of like an embroidery pattern, so it won't look good on a long stitch. It'll go way too far. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up to a finer stitch, almost to zero. Oh, that looks really good, both front and back. And let's try a different stitch. Let's do B and M. B and M, there it is. Try that one. And we're going to 
to widen that stitch out a little bit. And shorten it just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. You could shorten it even just a little bit more. I'm in this fine area. It looks really good. So here are our top stitches right here. And the thread did come through a little bit on this embroidery stitch, but on these stitches here, it looks really good. So this is a great machine, and if it ends up in your home, I hope you enjoy it.